My name is Dr. John Graham and I'm an orthodontist practicing in Salt Lake City, Utah. I'm a member of the Health First Medical Advisory Board and I'm also trained in medicine and dentistry. As orthodontists, we face far more medical legal risks than one might think. Certainly far too great of a risk to not be prepared as an office. I think as orthodontists and orthodontic staff members, we have a false sense of security about the potential risk of medical emergencies in our office because we don't do many invasive procedures and we don't administer many medications. My feeling is that the opposite is true. Given the high volume of patients that we see on a daily basis and the caregivers of those patients that bring them, and knowing nothing of the medical history of those caregivers, we actually expose ourselves to far greater liability than almost all practitioners in medicine and dentistry. Let's try to gain an appreciation for the increased risk that we as orthodontists and orthodontic staff members are exposed to based upon the numbers of patients that we see in our offices. Let's assume that the average orthodontic practice sees about 60 patients a day, and the average orthodontic practice works about 12 days per month. Let's break down those patients and say about 45 of those are kids and then the rest are adults. Of those kids, we have to assume that at least one adult brought them, and then we're going to sprinkle in a few more adults just in case family showed up or for consultation visits. So conservatively, we could assume that there's about 50 adult patients extra per day that are not patients of ours in our offices. This would make an average of about 110 total visitors per day to our offices. Let's subtract all of the kids because we're focusing on cardiac event risk, and that leaves us with about 65. If we have 65 adults and we multiply that by 12 days a month, that gives us 780 adults per month. We're going to stay conservative. And we'll say that the average orthodontic office is open for about 10 and a half months a year because orthodontists tend to vacation quite a bit. We do that math and that leaves us with 8,190. Think about that. Over 8,000 adults with generally unknown medical histories are sitting in our offices every year. That is a startling number when we think about exposure to risk on a daily basis. And I would contend that that's likely more than any other practitioner in both medicine and dentistry on a daily basis. As a practicing orthodontist, I understand the unique pressures we face in consistently delivering high quality patient experiences while ensuring practice readiness and patient safety. I've learned that it's critical that you have the essential elements of emergency preparedness in place based on the risks we've just identified the ADA's best practice guidelines for medical emergencies in the dental office cover the areas of preventing potential medical emergencies, developing an action plan, recognizing a patient's distress and managing a medical emergency that may result, and being prepared with recommended emergency drugs and equipment. Here, I will cover the training and emergency preparedness recommendations. These involve having an emergency medical kit with essential medications to respond to common patient medical emergencies, portable emergency oxygen, an automatic external defibrillator, and staff training on the use of these medications and this equipment. The key element of preparedness is the emergency medical kit. For general dentistry and orthodontics, this should include a minimum of the seven essential medications recommended by the ADA to meet the needs of emergencies that typically arise in the dental office. In addition to the emergency medical kit, you should be equipped with a portable oxygen system that is dedicated to emergency response. A centrally plumbed oxygen system using h size cylinders may not provide the positive pressure capability for resuscitation, and a centrally plumbed system may not be able to reach patients in the waiting room, restroom, or just outside the office. AEDs are a key component of dental office emergency preparedness, so you'll want to have one of the leading products capable of use with both adults and children. Like your emergency medical kit, the AED must be centrally located and your staff trained on its use. Also remember to routinely check the AED battery if you're not using a service such as Health First's OnTrack application, which tracks expiration of pads and batteries for you and then replaces them on time to ensure readiness. Orthodontists are fortunate to have Health First, which serves as a one-stop resource for the practice readiness and patient safety solutions covered in this video. If you purchase one of their medical emergency kits, you won't have to worry about expiring medications. Over 40,000 dentists and orthodontists rely on Health First to automatically track and refill their emergency medications. Plus, they can ensure that your AEDs and oxygen tanks are all up to date as well. Remember your patients and their families are counting on you to meet the standard of care for patient safety. 
By following my recommendations, you can create a practice-ready office environment, gain peace of mind, and most importantly, help to save a life in the case of a medical emergency. Thank you.